Welcome into the Tuesday edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast. It's November 16th. We are halfway through this month already. Can you believe it? Where did it start and where will it end? <laughs> My goodness. Wow. Fast moving month. We have another interesting chart. Things talk about fast. Things are moving fast right now. So let's listen fast and we'll get through this so that you can get on about your day. Oh, and before we get into the chart, real quick announcement. I got permission from Steve Forrest to play you guys a chapter from the audiobook that I'm narrating. I know a lot of you like to consider the nodes. You're really into the exploration of the karmic question. Why am I here? Why is my soul here? What is this all about? What did I bring in and what am I supposed to be working on? He does the most amazing walk through a couple of charts Related to this little boy, James Leininger, if you've ever heard of him, he's a little boy that knew the exact details of his World War II mission over Iwo Jima in 1945 when he was shot down by the Japanese. Steve dissects his South Node. And by the way, they know who he was. They know who he was because actually when this story broke, I'm not going to go into the details. We'll do that on Sunday. But one of the guys that he flew with was still alive. This is such a cool story. It's been documented on Netflix. Well, Steve picks it apart from an astrological perspective. We'll do that on Sunday. I'm going to do part of it for the podcast. Those of you in the course, the 101 course, are going to get the full thing, all about 35 minutes of this chart analysis. So there's another reason we're going to start really kind of stacking up the bonuses in the course. So if you guys would like to get in there, just come onto the website, funastrology.com, and it's right there. So you course folks, look for a new module in the course. We'll just put it in there. We'll put it in with the nodes in the course, and then we'll play it here on the podcast on Sunday. Sorry, it's a really cool chapter, and I just wanted to mention that as a special announcement. Okay, let's look at the chart today. First of all, the moon changes signs today. It moves into Taurus. That's not until tonight at 9.17 p.m. Eastern Time. So you think, well, is there a void of course? Yes, there is, most of the day. The void of course begins at 10 till 11 this morning, 10 minutes till 11, 10.50 a.m., the moon goes void, of course. Brittany, if I don't answer my emails, I'll be at the Frisbee golf course all afternoon. <laughs> I got into Frisbee golf. It's been fun. So that, yeah, most of the day then is moon void, of course, ahead of changing from Aries to Taurus. Now, the sun sextiles Pluto during that period at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Sun sextiling Pluto. See, this is an interesting, almost different and opposite kind of energy from what we were talking about yesterday. Because again, if you are, yesterday we kind of followed a financial theme. If you are a financial astrologer and you deal with the sun and Pluto, your little Spock ears are pointed straight up. We had a great discussion on our Saturday Robert Glasscock horary class that was, he, we were talking about Pluto, and he did an excellent, oh, he's just so good. He did an excellent rendition of Pluto compared to Mars, kind of saying it's Mars on triple steroids. That's one of the key words you just get with Pluto is power. So kind of continuing this thing that we were talking about yesterday, I mean, here is this whole money thing now again because the sun Pluto, I'm going back to financial astrology because this is just a great application, sun Pluto is very positive. So yesterday we had a darker tone to things. Today we have a positive tone. Okay, where are the houses? I, I had to see, was the eighth house involved? No, it wasn't. When this aspect hits exactly today at 4.01 p.m., we're talking about the seventh house Scorpio and the ninth house Capricorn. And there's the sextile. So this has more of a personal tone to it. Now, we still have this whole connectivity to Uranus and Taurus. So between now and the end of the year, if you need to change, transform, modify, improve, implode, and rebuild <laughs> anything related to your entire overview of money, this is a great season to do it. What could fall under that umbrella? Well, we could have, obviously, changing a job. I'm personally doing some structuring. I won't go into the details, but just doing some structuring to make my own financial infrastructure 
better, actually more Saturnian, just better foundation, better structure, better organization. Now, this is no kind of financial advice by any means, but maybe you've had an inkling to buy some kind of investment or sell some kind of investment. If you've had that prompt, would be a good time to act on it. And tomorrow at just after noon Eastern Time, Mars opposes Uranus. So there's that whole connection just threading this together. So there is a dynamic of changing around money. You know, we've got these destiny card reports on the website on Fun Astrology, and I was looking at a couple of those over the weekend, and, and there, there is really positive money change in the air on those as well. So for some people, if those reports line up, if the cards line up the way that uh, would be favorable, then there are some really cool money paradigms going on there as well. One other thing that would be of note is Saturn is on this Mars-Uranus line in a T-square. So it's kind of a bending, not of the nodes, but at least of that axis of Mars getting ready to square Uranus with Saturn sitting there. I'll tell you what, when a chart gives you things three times, You've got something definitely to consider, and I'm having a hard time sitting here looking at this chart and not bumping into this money theme almost everywhere we look. So consider it. I think there's an energy in the air, and it has two sides. The coin has two sides. Yesterday, we kind of looked at the shadow. Today, we're looking, we're looking at a very positive picture on this side of the chart. All right, time to do some restructuring, realigning, get in tune with the universe and line up with these energies. Oh, what an outcome that will have in the future. Have a great day. We'll see you back tomorrow for Hump Day and Mars Opposite Uranus Day.